Next question I'm going to ask Emma first um, around the challenges. And so what have been some of your biggest challenges in maintaining momentum within your money at all to all catchment group? Yeah, so I see there's just a question popped into the chat there that's like what the role of regulation is. And that's timely because the biggest challenge we face as a catchment group is the impact of um, regulation in the last sort of five years because that regulation has no social lens like it's not built with a social lens that actually brings people together and when you bring people together like collectively they're actually really really effective at solving some of these challenges right and so when regulation is based at an individual level or a blunt rule which doesn't doesn't apply or isn't re doesn't resonate with an individual and what they what the outcome could be for them or their way of solving that issue then it actually has the negative social impact of pushing them apart and it pushes people apart and then that works in the face of catchment group which are actually trying to pull people back together so I guess like catchment groups and um have always there's always been a thing around catchment groups of identify your issues and then that'll allow you to bring people together. But when the biggest issue is regulation, that's actually at the moment, that's a really, really negative space. And so I think like the thing that's resonated with me over probably the last six months is actually, instead of finding an issue which is related to regulation, find something which is actually really fun, like find something which is not related to or not related to water quality and quantity, like it might be like one of the things that's been bantered around here is like a local trail or uh, a recycling station, like how do we solve on-farm waste collectively and, and all those types of things like that which are do good things and which bring people together but aren't related to or aren't connected to that rules, those rules which can actually push people apart and the other thing is like um, when you when you the ch another challenge we've had is when you get a large amount of funding like that it, it, we're actually really really reactive at the moment because boom there's a lot of money okay what are we going to do now and that's a challenge for us as well and also the other challenge is when people see the amount of work that's going into this they actually think oh no I don't want to be involved and so it's it's finding finding ways around that and making it a safe space for more leadership to stand up and be involved in catchment groups. Great, thanks very much, Emma. That was that was very insightful and thanks for sharing sharing those um, thoughts on that. Um, now, next, I'm going to ask Lloyd the, the, the same question. So what are some of your biggest challenges in the Pomahaka um, and maintaining momentum? Well, I think Emma's hit the nail on the head, to be honest. So well done, Emma. I think one of the biggest problems that we had initially was we had a group of farmers that were proactively wanting to do things and whenever they turned, they were told they weren't allowed to for whatever reasons. So because we were dealing with agencies that would, were dealing with rules as opposed to dealing with the environment or looking at the outcomes. Um, and so, and then we get all this other outside interference coming in. So it's all around this ownership thing. So. If a farmer has, has got it in his heart and has taken ownership of an issue and he's got responsibility, he'll go beyond, he'll, he'll be going to far and wide to get to a, a, to get to a goal that he wants, which comes from his heart, which is normally about, about his, comes back to his family normally and the ability to continue and for the community to continue. As soon as that is taken away from you, so as soon as a rule is implied, all of a sudden the ownership is taken away from you, and given to the guy who makes the rule. Now the farmer owns, the only ownership the farmer has is the rule. So the rule becomes the bottom line. So he loses his ownership. So with his ownership, he loses his will to survive and then to, you know, to, to go to the extra mile. So it's all about, I think it's really, it's really a thing you've got to come to grips with is you've got to have the people that are making the changes have to have ownership of the issue. And they need to be helped, not directed. Um, and so I think, and that that was a really that was a really big barrier, um, you know, big challenge for us in the early days. And then the next big challenge is when exactly what Emma says is a whole heap of money lands up on your plates, and all of a sudden you lose you lose you lose sight of what you're actually here for. You're too busy writing blue and funding applications and trying to and trying to forsake the guys with the money 
rather than actually thinking about, why don't I just go down there and have a meeting with those 10 people down on the upper white coin coin and do it, you know, and get together and work out some, you know, some mitigants that we can do that's going to actually improve the water quality for future generations. The, we like to be doing stuff rather than explaining yourself all the time. And it just gets so tiresome when it seems like, it seems like um, it's a privilege to have the money or, you know, it's like you're always reporting on the money. You're not reporting on the good things that are going on all the time. It just um, becomes counterproductive. So I think that's really, um, that's really, it's a challenge that we have to get over as groups that we don't actually lose that core role, which is farmers helping farmers to achieve environmental outcomes for the whole country. So Roger, I'll come to you. And what are some of your biggest challenges in maintaining um, momentum within your catchment group? Thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, we've got lots of challenges, but but only but that's that's why we're in a community catchment group, isn't it? So you know we try to fix everything. Um, but our, our, we've got two main challenges. One is the money, which Lloyd and Emma have both spoken about. You know, the the government give us this money, which is valuable, um, but then the expectations around the, how we match to manage that money is huge. Um, and the reporting, we have two and a half um, employees on, on us and a fair proportion, not a fair proportion, but a lot of time is spent actually managing the money. Um, and, you know, they have budgets and I understand that from the government, but it's something we as community catchment people and MPI need to work together in MFE and, and come up with a better system of doing it or more flexible system. Um, but yeah, so that's one challenge. My, our second challenge is um, we've got a very good structure in the RRCC. Um, and one problem we had, we had a uh, farmer, a couple of farmers turn up at a presentation evening um, about setting up a community catchment group. And they went off and thought they could set up their own sub catchment group under us, but they didn't tell the full story to their community. And that ever since that, they, do, they weren't well grounded, they didn't have a good vision. And that was a real issue for us going forward because all of a sudden the farmers didn't have a clear understanding of what community catchment was about because the two people that were, even though they were keen, they didn't pick up the full message. And so it's really important for a successful community catchment is the farmers in it have to understand the true reason why we have community catchments, what the aim is, what the long-term thing is. And that is something we didn't, didn't it came through as clear as day when it wasn't done properly. 